Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we were talking more Death Stranding over the break, which made me pretty happy because, you, you know. You don't get criticized. I don't get criticized. That. <laughs> that was a safe space today. Yeah, but speaking of, you know, the publisher who brought Death Stranding to us, Sony. Sony's been in the news because of the Bloomberg article that released that pretty much talked about um, Sony Corp's Visual Arts Service Group, which is kind of this group that helps Sony develop their big titles like Spider-Man mm -hmm. and Uncharted, and they kind of recruit from other smaller studios. Um, and they're, this person was just talking about the experience that this group has had with PlayStation, kind of not giving these studios creative freedom and always wanting them to support their big IPs rather than create any new IPs um, to kind of market. For example, um, we saw Dreams. Everybody knows Dreams, amazing game. Where was the marketing? No one knows, right? Um, yep. So in this article, they kind of talk about PlayStation's or PlayStation, how they vocalized their strategy going forward into focusing on their big name titles. So God of War, The Last of Us Part Two, as well as the remakes that they're hoping to make to come out for their next gen consoles, as opposed to creating new IPs and giving some of these smaller studios that are not like, you know, the big naughty dogs um, a chance to actually create their new IPs. So, you know, the article continues on and goes into how they're working on a remake for The Last of Us um, part, part, yeah, The Last of Us remake for PlayStation 5. Um, yeah. And, you know, The Last of Us came out how long ago? So long ago, but again, we're well, getting eons. another. We're getting. 2013, <laughs> I think, is when it came yeah. out. Right? And I think yeah. there have been two remakes, if not three remakes, yes. of The Last of Us. Well, there was um, one for PS4. Yeah. PS4, yeah. and then there was like the collection. It was the remastered yeah. version um, for PS4. I think yeah. it was, yeah. Yeah. And then, I, but I think before that, there was a collect, or there was the HD, like with the DLC. Right. They did. They did a. They did a oh. updated version oh. for the PS3 because there was a yeah. PS3 re-release yes. and then there was a PS4 like full remaster. remaster. It was an yeah. actual remaster. Remaster. So yeah. we, you know, according to this report, we're getting another one for PlayStation Five. So I wanted to get you guys uh, your opinion on this news that's coming from Sony. We've talked about it uh, before on the Squadcast as well as previously just before the break. Sony strategy is it working with them? Do we want to see a remake of The Last of Us? Uh, Steve, I'm going to send this out to you to kick things off. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll have to say this if, again, full disclosure, I did uh, consult on The Last of Us too, so <laughs> I have worked with Naughty Dog uh, on the past, but I did not know anything about a remake or uh, anything in regards to, to the, this, this news that basically that Jason Trier, that Bloomberg just kind of like dropped on this because that was a, that's a there's a lot of information in that article there is a lot. um yeah as far as remakes are concerned i think in it like in regards to, if you're thinking about the last of us as a game itself i don't think uh like it, a, a remake just seems like a really weird idea because you're right it, like it's already been remastered on the playstation 4 mm -hmm. it still kind of looks good on the like even if you play it on the playstation 5 i mean yeah. it's not it's not like it like a, it would be a, like unless they were able to say, for instance, use the same uh, graphics animation engine that is in The Last of Us 2, or right. also as well, adding in the accessibility options that was in The Last of Us 2. If yeah. they were able to do those two things on this remake, then I kind of would all, like, I then I would say, yeah, I would actually wouldn't mind that, but uh, in, in not necessarily as a sort of a standalone, I think if they were able to bundle the two together, so basically Last of Us and The Last of Us 2, in one collection, including the Left Behind DLC, and it's running on PS5, and it's running the same engine uh, as Last of Us 2, and it just, like, if it does, I think if you do that, that as a package as a whole, then, I mean, you're gonna get people to buy it. And I think mm -hmm. that, that that would kind of be the reason to be like, oh, okay, that now, that now makes sense. Mm -hmm. The thing that I'm worried about is, what was kind of said in this article was that, I'm afraid, like, I'm afraid, and I, and I love Night Dog, I love all the people there, there's amazing developers that are, that, that are there, but I'm afraid that Sony's kind of becoming almost the Naughty Dogs, the the Naughty Dog studio. Yeah. Um, the fact that in the article it said that Sony Bend was trying to build a pitch, a Days Gone too. Yeah. And then they were like, "Well, no, why don't you just help with Naughty Dog?" 
mm-hmm. on uh, on on what they're, on what they're working on, mm-hmm. and they kind of had to basically be like, hey, what's going? Like, we do not want to be a Naughty Dog studio. We want to yeah. be like our own, like make our own thing. Mm-hmm. And, and that, it, sorry, go ahead, Steve. No, no, go ahead. And, and that's the thing, right? Like, I just want to clearly point out, like, this article does talk about a lot of different smaller studios supporting those bigger studios um Mm -hmm. like naughty dog and that that's where i think the real issue kind of lies but in that specific scenario i think i would argue did they really is i think that was a good choice like i don't think i would want to see a days gone (laughs) too really but that's the thing i I think it's got like it's gotten better i mean the story is not really super great as like like as far as you think of like okay sony exclusives yes it's not at that sort of caliber level memorable characters i don't think like when i think days gone yes i had fun with that game um especially like horde modes really fun although Mm -hmm. it's kind of a ripoff of zombies Sure. Um, from act, like uh, Call of Duty, Activision sure. zombies. So, um, but the characters were not that like Deacon. I, I'm sorry, I he's not memorable to me. Really, I, I think. think with, oh no, go ahead. I was just gonna say with Days Gone too. It's one of those games where I think the world has so much potential, yes. and they yes. just missed with the characters. Okay. That is a That's world fair. that I do not want to let go of, because yes. if you really spent time exploring that game, all the little lore details, like figuring out what happened to get the world to the point that it was at is what drew me into that game. I could care less about Deacon and the rest of the characters, <laughs> but like just getting drawn into that world was exciting, and I was really hoping, and it I was really hoping that we would get something else from that game and from that IP. But seeing them focus on Naughty Dog isn't necessarily a bad move, like you said. I think it's just discouraging for the other smaller studios that you have underneath the, the PlayStation and Sony banner. It starts to create this uncertainty. Yeah, the, the news of Days Gone 2 is kind of really disappointing to me, only because mm-hmm. by the end of that game, it sets up for such an interesting sequel. And yeah, like Absolutely. you said, Malik, like the, the world itself is... is has so much potential that it's a shame to let go of. And in my opinion, like it, it goes back to Uncharted. Uncharted 1's not that great of a game. I'm going to say it. It's it's because of the legacy and because of what they did to follow it up. Uncharted 2. I disagree just, with you. Are you it's really? not because of the legacy. The game, okay, yes, the gameplay is not the greatest. It's kind of what we've seen before with Tomb Raider, what they were doing there. But the character, like I, that's the thing about PlayStation that. exclusives. Yeah. You either have a really banging story, but the characters always have to be great because how yeah. they market their titles is always with the characters. You see their commercials where they're doing like that live action mix with their protagonists from different games. It's always about the character. And I think that's where, you know, the faith that maybe PlayStation had with a Days Gone sequel, the character writing, maybe that's what they were hoping for that they did not get with the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, and I totally get it too, like to a degree, because like The Last of Us is is a ma- like it is a masterpiece. Like it like it was named game of a generation the game of the generation for like for a reason. Yeah. Um and it, it it totally makes sense that they would be like, okay, Sony's gonna be like, okay, let's focus in on on our PlayStation Studios. The fact that they've got like technically the Uncharted movie that they're working mm-hmm. on, like with Naughty Dog, they got the HBO series. Like the, like they're putting a lot of eggs into Naughty Dog's basket for very good reason. Um yeah. I just it, like but it's just it's sad for like other studios like media molecule who made a fantastic like amazing game generate like creator with dreams and yet it just seems like it's kind of like ah it's it's almost like the redheaded stepchild of sony mm-hmm. being like ah it's one of those like kind of wacky games that we would like we would have loved back in the kind of the beginning of the playstation 4 generation um when it was all about the games but nowadays it just kind of feels like it's sort of like ah it's just we're just kind of sort of supporting that right now Mm -hmm. um i mean i mean you only have like they only have like a few sort of huge exclusives so you like you have last of us god of war uh horizon spider-man uh and like kind of really in the industry ghost of shima like there are opportunities to be able to create new ips but I think it's like when, when, when as, as like basically they're just they're in this to be able to make money. I mean that's the same with any corporation really. Yeah. But they yeah. want to be able to own the 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 conversation, being like this game sold 
X amount of uh, of copies in its first day of release, breaking all Sony records. And they saw the dollar signs in that and being like, every game that we put out that's a PlayStation exclusive has, has to, be to be this kind yeah. of caliber big. Yeah. And it puts a lot of pressure on those smaller studios to be like, well, then what are we supposed to do? Like, we're making yeah. this kind of fun thing that you kind of told us it's okay to do, but then it's like, oh, but now we got to have like a section of our studio, like help Naughty Dog. And like, I get it. It's like, when you're making those kind of like games, like you need as much people as possible, like as many people as possible. I think that like, even last of us two, I think there was like up to, uh, her, like there was like up to 2000 people that worked on that game. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense. Cause it's like, it's a masterpiece in, in, in story time. I mean, some, some people argue with that. Like it's not as great, but I still think it's a masterpiece in, in and of itself. And it proved that with winning so many like game of the year awards uh, last year. So, I think it's it, it's sort of it's great because we get to meet we get to be able to have these great huge blockbuster AAA games, but in a way by them doing putting all this effort into it, they're trying to be able to I guess create that quadruple A sort yeah. of level, and sure. they're letting everything else sort of fall by the wayside, and that's the thing I'm worried about for Sony. Sony yeah. was great about having these really cool games that would just kind of either fall under the radar or just like games that. I think even there was a clip of Sean Layden kind of going around just recently being like, he didn't like, like I think it was like Vibe Runner, I think it was the mm-hmm. game. And yeah. he said, it's like, it didn't sell the multi-million dollar like level, but that's not the point. Yeah. It's a game that is exclusive to the PlayStation that was really good. Yeah. And it just, it, it like, they'll, they'll, I think that we're going to be missing those games uh, on Sony uh, unless we sort of have like the third parties that are just be like, okay, yeah, we'll just publish on Sony as well. Yeah. And one thing to consider is that a lot of these games, the ones that they're touting as like they're, their blockbuster games, AAA, at one point they were risks that studios yeah. took. I mean, you're looking at Naughty Dog who went from like Uncharted was something brand new for them. And then yep. they did that for, for quite some time. And then they followed it up with a very dark game that wasn't Naughty Dog whatsoever at that point. Same thing for Horizon. I mean, you're looking at the studio that I mean, killed them. That's a huge, yep. huge departure from what they know of. Ghost of Tsushima, another one. And I mean, like, you it kind of stunts that that creative growth when when you look at like your your triple a studios and you're like you have to deliver a blockbuster mm-hmm. you you don't have that that creativity you don't have you, there's you know? so much and, anxiety as well to yeah. have your game perform to the level of these legacy titles like you know you mentioned steve that steve-o that the risk right uh that yeah. these studios took just creating those games. And other than Ghost and Horizon, I would say that it was also a different time when PlayStation came out with The Last of Us. There was still Mm -hmm. that console wars happening, right? It was still very a very close race on who would win, right? Um, There were some of those brands that PlayStation was known from, from a lot of like Japanese studios, right? But then they were shifting, you know, where their exclusivity rights, right? Um, Mm -hmm. So it was a very different time. And it's just interesting that now that PlayStation does have this legacy behind them that they're kind of still chasing that when they don't necessarily need to. Like you would think they would have more freedom or give more freedom to the studios because they know they're gonna make money because Final Fantasy, a remake, we're getting, right? We're getting the second part of the remake. We know we're getting a God of War too. We know Naughty Dog's working on something Uncharted, right? Um, So we know that there's gonna be those big games that sell. It's just very confusing what the strategy is if they're not giving that creative freedom. And as this article pointed out, some of the heads from that team, that group, actually left um, to go out and start their own studios, just work or work at other studios because of their frustrations with creative freedom. And I, it, yeah, go ahead, Steve. Well, I was to say like, I, I think that all comes down to it and, and, and even jumping off of uh, on, on Steve's point in uh, in that we saw those those studios being able to take risks because they were allowed to buy Sony's leadership. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think at the time when like when you when Horizon Ghost um, Uncharted and, and like in Last of Us, like we had essentially like Sean Layden kind of being that sort of, and, and, and you could tell that that was sort of his legacy of, of if you had to think about sort of the legacy of, of, of the leadership, Sean Layden's legacy would be giving studios that had these franchises, a, 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 like a risk of being able to, it's a risk to be able to create a brand new IP. And yet every single one of them knocked it out of the park. I mean, yeah. some people like argue days gone, maybe not as much, but 
there's like it, like it still was like a, a good like there were good games for for PlayStation to kind of prove like to kind of build up the stable of PlayStation exclusives. I think what we're seeing now is th- this is the Jim Ryan for, like era of, right. of PlayStation, and right now they are not in they are not they they like Jim Ryan doesn't want to be able to make, take these risks. He wants to be able to he wants guarantees. Yeah, and that I think even like it was an article said that like in that article it said it was like remakes is a guaranteed success. Yes. Like, well, sure. Yeah. Like, I'll give you that. But I think that's like, the, the, I think that's kind of where he's at. He just, he's not, he he's, doesn't want to take these risks. He wants to build, he wants to be able to, to make these blockbusters that that Sony has been known for. But mm-hmm. he, I think either he or just his leadership team or whatever has kind of like forgotten that this is this the, the, like the era that we're in right now of, of the, the PlayStation winning that sort of console generation was because of the of those studios taking risk and yeah. they're not allowing them to do so right now and yeah. that's what scares me yeah yeah, yeah jim ryan is clearly oh sorry no go ahead no i was just gonna say the the two big like takeaways from this really for me is if if you don't lose you can't learn right that it's that thing of xbox took their losses they yeah. figured out what they needed to do to be successful and if you think about it PlayStation and Xbox are doing the exact same thing. They're both focusing heavily on these giant blockbuster successes. Halo Infinite, you got Spider-Man 2. Like On each side, they have their big blockbusters that they're banking on. The only difference is that Xbox has spent this time and care building up this library with Xbox Game Pass, so that way they can really take those risks without really taking a risk. You're more so just giving exposure to these smaller games that that might not have had that exposure. And I'm wondering if we're going to get to the point where people are are kind of tired of the PlayStation exclusivity. Like, we get it. You're a premium con, you're a premium whatever, you're the better console, just let us play your games. I feel like if Sony doesn't cater to their fans and to, you know, some of the Xbox fans and just general gaming fans who, like you said, Camille, didn't get the chance to play The Last of Us because it's only available on PlayStation. They're going to suffer in the long haul. I feel so, like they, they won't. Honestly, yeah. I feel like they won't. I feel like their PlayStation fanboys and girls will buy a PlayStation every generation to play those exclusives. Yep. And that is a huge fan base. That's a huge fan base in the gaming community, right? Um, and that's what they're banking on. It is a very safe, I think their strategy is very safe, right? Like there's re- there's rumors that this um, Last of Us, or sorry, the, yeah, Last of Us will be a remake in terms of Final Fantasy-esque remake. So there may be added um, scenes and features and stuff like that, which like Steve said, I think that would be cool for people who either haven't played The Last of Us or if it hasn't, the first one wasn't as accessible as the second one was, right? Like that's a really cool way to bring in more people uh, to that title. But the fact remains, PlayStation's still gonna sell um, a PlayStation no matter what. (laughs) They're still gonna make money off of it. I do wanna point out though, although we're talking about like these big IPs that they have, Go to Tsushima was like the last real risk that I feel PlayStation took in terms of an IP and marketing it. But I want to mention Returnal. I feel like Returnal is mm. that next risk for them. So is it a case of where they're not looking at, you know, giving these studios creative freedom or they're making very specific choices on what games they want to represent their brand? Well, I think Returnal's in a slightly different position because Housemark is a second party studio. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, in this context, yeah, they can take more risks with their close partners and let them creatively make the games that they want while keeping their their in-house studios um, set on that path of like AAA, high, uh, big budget blockbuster games. But the, um, but the thing is like, look at the marketing for Returnal. They've been yeah. like marketing that game of course. Really well, which PlayStation, if they're putting, like they did with um, Death Stranding, right? If they're putting money into their marketing, they have high hopes for how that game will perform, right? Um, yeah. So I, I, that's why I mentioned Returnal. That's why mm-hmm. I feel like maybe that's their next risk. And maybe that is their strategy, Steve, like to yeah. look at second party studios and be like, you guys take that risk, right? Like we are focused on creating, you know, The Last of Us part seven, you know? Sure. <laughs> we're, we're, we're focused on creating all of those games that, you know, we've made that legacy on. We're gonna now approach second party studios. I think what it is now is just kind of unfair from the 
the inside of things where you have smaller studios that are contracted by Sony to create games, but also most of their time help out these big productions, which kind of, you know, is, is shady. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. just quickly jumping off the point that, that Steve brought up is like Jim Ryan's clearly a businessman. And from a business perspective, of course, you'd want something Last of Us coming out when that HBO series drops. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's yes. going to sell so many consoles and being able to say, OK, now we've got Last of Us part one and part two up to par. They look the same. They hopefully play the same, you know, like you said, accessibility features across the board and all that. That's such a smart move. But for a you know, an enthusiast or a player, yeah, that kind of it's isn't that exciting. Mm -hmm. If you've already yeah. played and adore The Last of Us, coming in here, you're like, okay, well, I would have much rather see, you know, an Uncharted remake or hell, like Bloodborne's 60 frames per second update. Like, give me some something new, you know, if you're if you're already invested in the PlayStation ecosystem. But if you're if you're just jumping in for the first time and you're like, wow, there's this new HBO show that looks really cool. I'm going to pick up a PlayStation. Of course, you want Last of Us there. Something yeah. new. Yeah. Yeah, I actually had a thought, wouldn't it be cool if actually they integrated Left Behind into The Last of Us where it's just one large story? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think actually, cool. now I'm thinking about that could, that could, that, that, that could be a cool, like, I, I would really like that actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes, uh, pretty much we are the problem that this is happening. We want more remakes. <laughs> That's what we're saying. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but Steve, sorry, bef uh, Malik, go ahead if you wanted to go ahead. No, I was when you just talked about risk. We still have Ghostwire Tokyo later. Yes, this year. although is, they kind of that's going to be. They kind of pulled back marketing on that, though. I I would argue. I, isn't that yeah. isn't that still part of Bethesda? It is, but they're they're but going through with that. Same I with think the yeah, they were they're they're still supporting it. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. But to, Ghostwire Tokyo, I, I don't know. I feel like there's something up with that game. I like, think that. Them. Well, I think that they really started to pull back the marketing around the same time that the Xbox rumors started popping up. So it's, yeah, it's scary, mm. but I mean, that could, that could be something exciting for them. I, I do agree that we are the problem. We like remakes too much because I wouldn't mind buying a PlayStation five and just getting a bunch of remakes and a bunch of remasters and just playing through them with, you know, the 60 frames per second and, and just the high fidelity and all the extra bells and whistles that they're going to add in. Like you said, yeah. Um, Steve, -O, when you were talking, it just some random thought came into my head. You know, you're talking about like for the core gamers, right? Like that's kind of just this news is kind of disappointing. But now I'm thinking, you know, the the idea of a hardcore gamers kind of changed, especially with the sure. rise of Twitch and PC. I would kind of argue that PlayStation is for the casual gamer. Really? Hmm. Because they they don't like PlayStation Now, we mentioned it. What is that, right? Um, their support for indies, yes, they have that there, but they're not doing as much as Xbox. And I think because of how Xbox is really shelling out money to kind yeah. of um, get these studios under their brand and also with Game Pass showcasing indies, I feel like that now is more of a brand for hardcore gamers that want to explore multiple games. Whereas PlayStation is more for like those casual gamers, whether they're jumping into like, and I say casual in terms of what types of games, not what types okay. of games okay. they're playing, oh, but yeah, like- they probably, oh. they probably heard about, okay, these PlayStation and Xbox, but, and like, they probably heard of like, okay, what is this Last of Us? What is this? Yeah, they're uh, going like to PlayStation this. for the Last of Us, but they may not be playing like games every day for a certain amount of hours or play competitively yeah. on a PlayStation, right? So that's what I mean. Like, I feel like that now is kind of the audience um, and fan base that PlayStation is targeting. And it may not it may not be a bad thing. And that may change with, you know, the rumors of this competitor to Game Pass that they're working on. To be that honest, it kind scary. of reminds me of, of Marvel. Like, like you, you even brought up, like, is there a fatigue of like these games? And I would say it's, it's comparative to like people saying well are we gonna hit like a marvel fatigue a superhero movie fatigue and it's like no because people just keep wanting that same thing and as long right. as people want the third person action blockbuster game playstation's there to give it yeah and like marvel you have those casuals that will watch a marvel yeah. movie because they hear it's they're great they're big yeah. budget but you also have that that fan base that it knows the story in and out yeah. but really marvel is catering to the people just coming to the Mainstream theaters audience. sitting exactly yeah. right yeah. um that's why they hire those a-list celebrities yeah yep 
Um, and the last thing that I yeah. was just going to say is Sony, Sony's marketing, especially right now, feels very akin to Apple in the fact mm. of there is a big shortage of PlayStation 5s, yet they've still got all of these massive titles That's and a good point. that they're working on. Mm. So it's almost like, I, I do agree with you that it is for the more general uh, casual gamer, but I wonder if they're starting to kind of foster that uh, exclusivity mindset. Yeah, yeah, I wonder too because Returnal is PS5 only, yeah. um, and there's not a lot of. I mean, there are PS5s out in the wild. I mean, I have one, but I'm like, one, yeah. there's a lot of people like Malik. You don't have one yet, yeah. so it's like, well, you're not gonna be able to play it until because it's not gonna be on PS4. So why market I, I think it? It's, exactly, yeah. and I, I, like I, I was because I would say because like I think when you guys mentioned about the marketing, I barely seen any marketing actually for Returnal other than like the PlayStation blog or that that's put it up or whatever. Or yes, actually, like, yeah. um, for the PlayStation 4, like, I feel like I noticed the marketing because we're kind of in this industry, we're following all those channels, but outside of that, I really There's don't really see not. much marketing. No. They really cool no. down because of the supply. So yeah. that may also be a smart thing for them to do because then there'll just be endless memes of people, like, trying to get a PlayStation 5 to play X game, right? Like, so yeah. this yeah, may be really smart. Yeah, that's something I never even considered. I didn't that, think that's about that's it as well. That's a great point. Yeah, because that's the thing. It's like I actually thought that Returnal was going to be a PS4 game as well. It, like until I looked it up, that I was like, "Oh shoot, it's PS5 only." I'm like, "Oh, that makes sense." Yeah. <laughs> you don't need a console seller if your console just constantly sells out. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, sold out. You're doing your job. That's true. <laughs>